Well, hello and welcome back to another video. This morning I am at somewhere I know and love very much, that is RFPB Rowmead, my old stomping ground, because I am here to meet a good friend of mine so we can go test something rather exciting out. And of course, you guys, having already read the title of the video, know exactly what that is, and that is the new 600mm F4 built-in TC. This is gonna be rather exciting. There's a man in an orange jacket with an orange car. Many of you will recognize Mr. You can spot me Nicol anyway. Rushi. How are you doing, sir? I don't really do camouflage very no, well. No, you don't. <laughs> no. But, uh, you're matching the kingfishers. So yeah. Hopefully, we might find. And look, there's something exciting in those for sure. Right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Rhyme Meet with Rishi. Hey, who, you'd have all guessed who it was, <laughs> you know. But uh, we've got something pretty exciting today that is the 600mm F4Z TC. You bring me all the best gifts, don't you? I do, I yeah. try, I try. Yeah. Um, we were kind of headed over this morning to kind of check out the Kingfisher hide. Did a couple of hours, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't, didn't see too much. I saw the Kingfisher, but um, wasn't in the right place, no. as is. As is the way. Yeah, with yeah. wildlife photography. But uh, today really was just to kind of get me a first look at the 600. Yeah, this is obviously the first time you've seen it. Yeah. And um, they brought the 400 to eight as well, just to, to compare the two. Yeah, so we could have a look at them. And I, I mean, I was shocked to start with when you handed me it. Like, it is so light. I mean, not so light compared to other lenses, like the 404.5, um, but it is ridiculously light for a 600 f4. I mean, I've used the FL version in the past, um, you know, I did a video on that that I'll put a link up to, um, you know, and that was fantastic. But now it's even lighter with a built-in teleconverter that is a massive upgrade. Um, and we were talking about earlier that um, it's only about 300 grams heavier than my 300 2.8. That is mad. Absolutely mad. Um, I mean, yeah, it's quite, it's still a big lens, Yeah. you know. It's going to be. It's still a 600. Yeah, it's still a 600. Um, but it is about the same, yeah, a little bit longer than the 800mm. Sure. Yeah, um, the 800pf that you guys will know that I've also used. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's incredibly well weighted is the other thing. Like, you know, when you hold it in your hand, it's not very front heavy. It's really the weight sits in the mm. middle. That means that, you know, I've been able to use it handheld today. I haven't felt like I've no. been restricted to having to use a tripod or anything like that. I mean, it's gonna work fantastic on the tripod, but you know, in terms of being able to use it handheld, it's gonna open the door for certain things. And I mean, just the reach at that handholdable nature mm -hmm. is gonna be crazy. I mean, we've got the 400 28 here as well. Um, kind of just compare things really. You know, for me, I've got my pre-order in on one of these. My one will be coming at some point, hopefully, reasonably soon. Can't wait, it's gonna be amazing. Um, you know, and I chose that because I already had a 300 2.8. Mm. And I think that is a an interesting thing when you're picking a super telephoto lens, is like, how do you know what to pick? Well, it can depend on what you already have and what sort of work you want to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, the 600 is great for small birds, distant subjects, and creating like really close in portraits of, of wildlife, mm -hmm. basically, or sports and whatever you do, but you know, you'll know what a super telephoto is for. And like, we know like, in the past that we don't really agree when it comes to yeah. lenses, right? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, it, there's, there's so much choice out there now, and it really comes down to what's gonna be right for you rather than just buying like the, what you think is the best lens, because yeah. it might not be right for you, right? 100%, so. and it depends what you're gonna do, what you're shooting, yeah. there's gonna be loads of different scope for different choices, but for me personally, the reason I have opted for the 600 F4 with the teleconverter is that when I was using the 800 earlier in the year, I really fell in love with that super telephoto reach. Then the ability to also have that brighter aperture of the F4 is gonna be a lot more useful for duller days in, you know. <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> yeah, but it also this week has been absolutely horrible. It has, but yeah. They're a little bit better today, but you know, having that bright aperture, mm. super useful for that sort of stuff. Um, and then of course the reach for smaller subjects. Yep. You know, there's loads of things on my list that I want to photograph. Um, I've wanted to do this for ages. There, there has been times when, with my 300 in my hand, I thought, 
God, I wish I just had some extra reach mm -hmm. that, you know, is a big deal. Just to get a little bit closer. Yeah. And yeah. of course, the 600 and the 400, you can use the Z teleconverters as well. So you can add the two times or the 1.4. I mean, if you add the two times, you're up to 1200 mil F8. Then you can either use DX crop on that, yep. that's crazy. Or you can actually use the internal teleconverter as well as that. And then you're getting all the way up to like 1680 millimeters that is just mad for like and then you can crop on top of that as well in one with the lens. DX. in yeah. one lens yeah. yeah without taking it off or doing anything like it's just wicked and i think one of the big things is like yes you can add teleconverters to it but the reason the built-in teleconverter is such a big deal is that flexibility and speed mm -hmm. you know if you're photographing something out in the field and it's amazing everything's happening you want to be a bit closer it always works that you put a teleconverter on and then you wish you'd have taken it off immediately. Whereas now I can, you know, I can just literally put the teleconverter off, put the teleconverter on. You know, don't even have to like, you know, take my eye from the viewfinder, anything like that. Just on, off, no worries. That's super important if you're in terrible conditions. Yeah. Like if it's hammering it down with rain, it's snowing, sandy, there's none, none of this taking, exposing your camera or anything. You just go one, Two done, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. You don't have some, you know, extra teleconverter in the bag, like no. hanging around. You've just got one bit of gear that's going to do it. That is super cool. And as you were saying, it's engineered for it, isn't it? Yeah. So that teleconverter is part of that lens, right? Yeah. Whereas when you buy a teleconverter off the shelf and then you use that with a lens that a separate lens, um, it's not going to be the same as a teleconverter that's completely built yeah. into the back of a lens. Specifically right? for yeah. it, for sure. Yeah. So really, you're getting two lenses. And the choice between these two will be if you want a 400 2.8 and a 560 yeah. f4, or if you want a 600 f4 and an 840 5.6. Now, for me, just in kind of the way I've been shooting recently, the, the extra telephoto is definitely what I wanted, and that's why I have opted for the 600, and it's why you'll see a boatload more 600 mil content. I just wanted to see it for the first time, and when you like, oh, it's just so cool. Um, I mean. There's no getting away from the fact that it is a big lens. And if you're the sort of person who's thinking like, I don't really want to lug that around, sure. there are options, you know, like the 400 4.5. I've been using this for a month and I've absolutely loved it. It's so light and small and comfortable to take with you. But there are times when I want the reach and that extra bright aperture <laughs> is something I do want. And that is the reason I would personally opt for a lens like this. I mean, there's no getting away that there is a cost involved yeah, in, obviously, yeah. in the lens. Um, it's not a cheap lens, but then the engineering that's gone into it costs a lot of money for research and development. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is two lenses in one. So but then, you know, the, you know, this is a lens that would last you 10, 15 years. Right? Oh, yeah. So. I mean, like my 300 2.8 that I've had since I was 18, I have dragged <laughs> everywhere. everywhere. And it has, you know, it still looks great. I mean, yeah, it's got sand in it, it's had penguin poo on it, all sorts, but still works absolutely fine. Like, yeah. It's great, it still nails the shots. Rishi hates it, but that's <laughs> totally... That's know, just my opinion. Yeah, that's just your opinion. The 300 2.8 is a brilliant lens. But, um, you know, this is something that I've definitely... Just to experiment with different kind of styles and subjects is, is, is a reason that I'm personally opting for the 600, mm -hmm. um, for sure. And, you know, just using it already... It is good. Mm. It is really good. The, the focus speed is quick in a way mm. that I didn't expect it to be that, that fast. fast. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, racking from like distance to front is like so quick. You've got a video video on your channel like of doing stuff. Focus, like, yeah, yeah, like the focus speed is ridiculous. Yeah, but um, it's, it's amazing. How... And it is one of those things you don't really realize how fast it is until you're looking through the lens itself. So. Yeah, yeah. And you just like that. That has some speed. Like I always think my 300 2.8 <laughs> is fast, but this is faster for sure. And you said you think it's a hair faster. Yeah, than maybe. Like in the right circumstances, I think that might be a little bit faster than this 400 2.8. But yeah. I haven't, I haven't extensively tested that. Yeah. So. I mean, of course, in low light, the 2.8 is going to give you an advantage. But I think for most of what I do, f4 is usually completely yeah. fine for working in that. And you know, the extra distance to kind of. Be able to be a bit more respectful of my subjects, be further away, mm -hmm. super handy. And in the UK, a lot of stuff is tiny, small, and Dark. always the other <laughs> side of the lake. So yeah. it's super handy to have that extra reach. Um, 
it probably is good to talk about the fact that the design's the same. Yeah. We were saying this, you know, you down the front, you've got the um, your function buttons, two function rings, focus ring, and then you've got the built-in teleconverter, obviously, with it just on and off, and then you've got the memory set as well. You were telling me something really cool about the memory set. Yeah, so obviously on traditional lenses with memory sets, you could just assign like a memory set to a button on yeah. previous lenses, but now you can actually assign your memory set focusing points to um, the dials. So you can effectively roll from one location to another, or you can flick from one location to another, rather than just having to press yeah. a button, if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's super um, handy. Like, so yeah. for example, like if you've got, as in the Kingfisher hide earlier, if you've got two sticks for Kingfishers, one at the back, one at the front, you can set one as a memory set, set another mm. as a memory set, turn one way, you go into the back one, turn the other way, you come into the front one. That is just going to be mega useful for working in a hide where you've got fast subjects moving very quickly. And of course, if you've got your hand on the lens, just one, two, you're not moving too much, you're keeping it very stable, like super quick, and you know it's gonna nail that focus because mm -hmm. it's like, you've already set it in. So it's gonna be <laughs> absolutely perfect. That is crazy useful. Um, and I know that's gonna be super great, especially for like, you've got birds in flight as well and they're coming to you using kind of racking focus down the yeah. lens you just turn it go to the background again and then bring the next one in that's going to just be you know and especially if you've got a subject that's hidden but you know it's in a specific area so yeah. it's going to pop up at yeah. a moment for example then yeah um it can really help you for that as well yeah that is going to be good i can certainly see this like for a lot of birders who are waiting for it to go on that specific little twig that is going to be <laughs> super, super handy for in sure. a minute that bird will land right there yeah, yeah, yeah and that's the one yeah. you want i mean everything else is still the same you've got the carbon fiber hood that is smaller than the old yeah, one yeah, yeah. And, and we were actually just saying that there is a benefit to that that i think personally is the fact that because it doesn't come back as far down the lens when you reverse it and put it in your camera bag you don't get as big of a bulge in the camera bag. That means that when you've got it on your back, mm -hmm. you don't have it like sticking into your yeah. bag. That is really quite nice. Um, you know, the, it, you know, I said to you, I've got to buy another camera bag now because <laughs> obviously is... it's a big lens, and I would like to be able to get it in the camera bag yeah. attached. Yeah. So um, yeah, can I have to go camera bag shopping. Sorry to my girlfriend. Never um, a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if she'd agree, but uh, yeah. So you are going to have some accessories that you're going to want. I think that something that I'm going to use a lot with this is a monopod. Yeah, yeah. Like that's going to be really yeah. fun for like you know just giving you a bit more support to hold the weight for for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But then you can just quickly move and use it handheld as well. That's going to be great. Of course, on a tripod with like a gimbal, like my fluid gimbal, that's going to be just superb. But you know, it's going to be one of those lenses that's going to give me real opportunity to sit in a static position and react to what's happening in front of me without having to move too much all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm really looking forward to, just kind of a bit of a different way to shoot it as I'm... Because it's like, it's, I know it's not, it's not a zoom lens, but it's yeah. kind of like a zoom lens in the fact you can drop the teleconverter in if you needed that extra reach, right? Yeah. So, and of course, yeah. if you're doing video, you can use that new feature where you, you, you can, zoom, yep. yeah, you can like zoom yep. in. That's really cool, um, for sure. I mean, to be fair, it is a fully spec lens yeah. that has a price to match, but I think when you're investing in equipment that is going to last 10 years, you can't look at it as like, it's just that expense for that. Divide it up by the time you're going to use it mm -hmm. is a more of a reasonable understanding. Like I would say that my 300 2.8 has well made me that back. Probably, you know, 10, 20 fold as a professional wildlife photographer. And if this is like your hobby that you do all the time or, or your profession, getting that extra 10% performance, speed and everything like that is so worth it. And I think you'll agree, once you've used the Super Tellies. Yeah, they're a different class of yeah. lens, right? Um, and I appreciate that they're not for everybody. Yeah. But they, they have to be a different len class of lens for the mm. people that do use them and the people that are used to like the older 600s, the 400s, the 800s and so on. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I think that actually what is really nice to see is of course, if you do go for something like the 400, still has a lot of the features, like, you know, the memory set button and stuff like that, yeah, it's yeah. super handy that you yeah. have got on this. So, you know, if the 600 is a bit out of the price range, the 400, 4.5 is really good. I am gonna do a review on this because I have had it in the kit bag for like a month or so, and I've been testing it out. I've really enjoyed shooting it, um, but there has been times when I'm like, oh God, I wish I had a little bit brighter, mm. but you know, and a little bit more reach for stuff. So the 600 is certainly, 
I can't wait till this thing turns up. <laughs> Me and Rishi are planning to go on some other days, for sure. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've been a bit busy the last few weeks. So, <laughs> but uh, we've got some time. We've got yeah. some time. So yeah. we're going to get get some lenses, go out looking for wildlife, and uh, make some shots. But uh, it's getting a bit dark it is. at it the is. moment. Um, we haven't got too many pictures yet with the 600, but it's a bit of a shame. So I'm wondering if we go for a little wander. Yeah, I think we could and, try a couple uh, of different hides, see what we can find. See what else we can find. But um, yeah, little introduction to the 600, and I am sure you'll be seeing a lot more of it on the channel, for sure. So weird to have Rishi at my local reserve. Like, you don't know, I literally grew up here. I literally grew up at the end of the road from here. And uh, a few years ago, I saw a picture in one of Rishi's talks. I had a picture of here and I was like, well, you took that at Meads. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I go there all the time. I was like, I literally grew up there. I've never seen you here. So it's, uh, it's quite nice to be it's down here together. One of those strange things in life, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, some ducks. Oh, I might try for them. Well, sadly, that is about it for today. And this quick look video at the 600mm ZTC. Awesome of you to bring it down, Richie. I know no, you're it's... mega busy at the <laughs> moment, and it's crazy that you've brought wandered down with this so I could have a look at it. I mean, sometimes I get in the chance to look at a lens. Yeah. You know, it just it gives just you a gives different you appreciation for it. Work, the speed, yeah. all that type of stuff. All right? that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you told me, I've been texting you, and you, you told me it's fast, you're gonna love it, it's really cool, but man, this is impressive. And this is a pre-production model as well. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that now you've got a 600 mil that's hand-holdable, F4, then you're at 840, all in one lens, designed all in all to just give you the best performance out in the field, is gonna be crazy. And I yeah. cannot wait for my one of these to turn up. Sadly, I have to give this back to Rishi do, now. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, we're going to be doing some more videos yeah, absolutely. soon. Yeah. Um, you know, going out and actually getting some so, pictures. Yeah, some more photography related stuff, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and of course, we'll have loads more kind of Nikon content, everything like that. So you guys, you know, if you've got any questions about the lens, anything like that, you know, drop it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And if I don't know the answer, I'll ask Rishi and he'll, <laughs> he'll answer it for you. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked on this. So glad that you could pop it down and bring no it to me. It's always and good to see new stuff. Yeah, so, it yeah. certainly is. And uh, look out for much more 600 mil content on the channel very soon. But uh, with that, it's probably going to get dark in a bit. It so, is. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to head off. Right then. So uh, until the next one, guys, get out, enjoy your wildlife photography, and uh, we'll see you soon.